is this month's theme is uh, I set up themes every month. This month, uh, I have two themes, social media platforms and you and grow, you grow your audience through authenticity. And the reason why I asked you um, to join us today on the AMA is because you are highly successful with your uh, social media practices. And one of the main reasons why you're so successful, successful with your social media practices is because of your authenticity. You know, I do my best. You do a fantastic, you do a fantastic job. And the <laughs> the funny part is you and I have been on panels before and we've had all kinds of conversations privately and publicly about what I call the three portals of voiceovers, representation, online casting sites, and direct marketing. And you continue to assert that you hate direct marketing and you don't and you don't use direct marketing at all. However, Direct the umbrella of direct marketing. My definition is there are no intermediaries between you and the casting opportunities, representation or online casting sites. It's you trying to create a direct connection between clients mm -hmm. who are the people that create content on behalf of end clients, Coca-Cola, mm -hmm. Nike, Jello, Pepsi, CVS, or Volkswagen in, in, your, in your situation. So when most people think about direct marketing, they usually think about two only two things email marketing and cold calling. Mm -hmm. And that is an aspect of outbound marketing. There's also, you know, uh, newsletters and sending swag, all the stuff where you grab someone by the, by the call and be like, look at me, give me money to say stuff. You know what I mean? But then there's also inbound marketing, which is doing things on a passive level in other words, to passively attract people's attention. And the biggest one of that, at least in 2023, has been for a while, probably will be for a while, is social media. You are extremely active on social media, in particular on Facebook, which, and I'm sorry to break it to you, is a form of direct marketing. And you excel at that form of direct marketing. <laughs> I mean, I'm not, my presence on Facebook though, I don't feel like I am trying to reach new voiceover buyers. You're not because you can't, you know, you can't because no one on so no voice seekers are paying any attention to anything that we are doing on social media because they're too busy posting their nonsense on social media, trying to get people to like their stuff. And the yeah. only time they tend to be looking at us on social media is to look to see if we're an NDA violator, mm -hmm. a client basher. Mm -hmm. or some form of religious or political whack job. Mm -hmm. So they want to make sure we do not have the potential to embarrass or damage their company. But apart from that, yeah. do you really have, have you ever had any voice seekers, future, current, or past engaging with your social media content? I mean, so I have some friends who are now, you know, married to copywriters or video producers or you know etc cetera, etc cetera, who mm -hmm. they've reached out to me and said hey my husband is making this video for this new hospital like could you read for it and right that's happened a couple of times or like right. hey i'm doing a new project with this like can you help me voice it or whatever mm -hmm. but generally no right although i will say a few of my uh close producer friends who I've worked with for years and years and years, we do follow each other on Facebook and Instagram, mm -hmm. which is more of like a, you know, follow your friends and hang out with your friends. Right. If you had already Facebook, established a relationship a with them and yeah. then it extended into social yeah. media, not they discovered you exactly. on social media and exactly. said, Hey, I want to give you money to do this project to say this but stuff. What I, what I have found, especially, especially having children and like needing to communicate with my clients, my needs regarding my children. For example, I'm going to be out of the office because I'm having a baby. Right. Or I'm <laughs> pregnant and I'm going to have a baby. So I'm not going to be around in like mid-May to mid-June, most likely. Like, right. And then everything that comes after that, like my kid is really sick and she's staying home from school. So I mm -hmm. can't do this thing that I was going to. I find that the more transparent and open I am with them about the real things that are happening in my life, the, the more the business relationship is solidified because they see me as a human and a friend rather than just a nameless voice behind a microphone who's interchangeable with every other voice behind a microphone that they work with. Right. And yeah, so, that's, yeah. 
And it's not, I feel like that's a, that's like a calculated way of saying like, I share my life with these people so that they like me better, but that's not really it. It's so organic to me. It, I don't feel like I need to hide parts of myself from the people that I work with, especially mm -hmm. the people who I work with on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. We, we talk to each other, you know, often, often enough for me to say like, oh, how was your trip to Bermuda? Right. You know, like, and so when you can use social media to to strengthen the relationship with your existing clients, I don't think that's a bad thing. As not long at as all. You're not posting all kinds of weird stuff. Right, right. Well, people have these preconceived notions about what social media is and what it's for. And, mm -hmm. you know, how many people do you know that actually took a course on social media before they entered before they created their Facebook profile or their LinkedIn profile, right? The only time that any voice actors are doing that is if they're taking Tracy Lindley's LinkedIn class or Jonathan Kelly's yeah. Instagram class, and those and the those those courses have have merit. There are things to it to be to learn, but most of the time you just kind of open the box without reading the instructions. Yeah. And people have these preconceived notions about how they're supposed to comport themselves. So I'm supposed to be on Facebook so I can get clients. Yeah, and that's just not. I don't, at least in my you know, I've joined Facebook in 2007. I don't yeah. think I've ever done that. Maybe I'm doing a, maybe I'm doing a bad job, but like I said, the theme for this month for the VO strategist is, is social media and authenticity. And just the more that you can be you and share you naturally, marketing is value demonstration. It's value, it's, it's uh value promise and value delivery. Value promise is, Hey, if you work with me, I'm work with me, I'm great. You know, come to our restaurant. We just opened. We're we're awesome. And then there's a value delivery where you go to the restaurant and you walk into the bathroom, and you see how clean the bathroom is. Yeah, that's value delivery. Yeah. And most voice actors coming into the industry don't they don't understand any marketing principles in general, just beyond the fact that every all their lives they've watched TV ads and heard radio ads and they've just been bombarded on it on the consumer. And but when it's their turn to be the person who's creating the content, everybody's lost. And either right. they turn into braggadocious, uh, self-aggrandizing clowns, look at me, look at me, look at me, or any of their social media efforts are, oh, I'm sorry to bother you, but dot, dot, dot. And who yeah. wants to work with with that person anyway? Um, I do want to take a second to say, hi, hi, Lori. Welcome to the Ask Me Anything. We have some we have some people. This is Karin Gilfrey, voice actor, founder of the Voice Actors of New York City Facebook group, who's wearing her hat. Vice President of the National Association of Voice Actors, uh, thought leader in the voiceover industry and all around good egg, to use a, an anachronistic term. Um, yes. But Karin has uh, agreed to take some little time, take some time to hang out with us for a little bit. Um, this month's theme on the VO Strategist Ask Me Anything is social media and authenticity uh, uh, in in your pre in your online or just analog presence to call it. So you're welcome to yes, cat posts, Lori. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Um, you're welcome to post any questions that you have for myself, especially for Karin, because Karin is our special guest. If you want to ask any questions about social media, um, now Karin does not position herself. She's not a coach. She does no. not position herself as a, as an expert on social media. I have asked her to come here because I love what she does on Facebook. She genuinely and consistently expresses her authenticity as a human and is constantly advocating on behalf of the voiceover industry. Not, hey, check out this Volkswagen spot I just did. Don't I sound awesome? Like that's a post you'll and never actually, see. And actually, if you post, this is a Volkswagen spot I just did. Don't I sound awesome? And that stays on your profile for like three years. And the next year, Honda wants to hire you and they do a deep dive into your social media. It might actually work against you, which has happened to me a couple of times mm -hmm. uh, for not even things that were broadcast. <laughs> it's always a balance, right? It's always a balance. Um, how much to share versus uh, like a, your actual work. Mm -hmm. versus just you yourself. Right. And I would say I would say I've I've discovered a good um solution to this. And that is if you have a video that you want to share that might create a conflict for you or that's a big name brand, I would say keep it on your website as long as it's valid. Mm -hmm. And 
maybe when you are sharing your uh, cool new social media post or whatever, maybe a link to your website instead of the video itself. Mm -hmm. Um, or just remember, set a reminder to take it down when you take it off your website. Yeah, that's a good <laughs> idea. As that's... long as it's as long as it's valid and it's still running, you can keep it on your website as much as you want. Right. If you think that company is likely going to come back and hire you again, and you're not officially holding a conflict, but you know, like every year Volkswagen renews the Christmas spot that you did for them, so you're kind of not working with other car companies just because you expect that at Christmas time, your Christmas spot might be renewed or right. they, they might come back at any time, um, you can keep it up. But if you're auditioning for Toyota and you're in the final few to get this Toyota job, take it down, take yeah. down all remnants of Volkswagen because it doesn't actually matter anymore. You have no legal conflict because the spot is not running anymore. Um, and uh, you don't want them to be swayed by the fact that you did a Volkswagen commercial five years ago that's no longer right. a thing. So you want to make it a point to keep past, keep track of past conflicts as well as present conflicts yes. because it could affect your marketability and your castability. Absolutely. And this that is, is not so lesson. much a this is not so much a problem if you don't do a lot of commercials. Right. Commercials are really the only place where this matters. Mm-hmm. Training videos, audiobooks, video games, other kinds of, you know, other kinds of work, animation, documentaries, you can share that and it can stay up forever. Mm -hmm. It's only commercials that are a little bit problematic because you don't want any new clients in the same product category to think that they can't hire you because you have a conflict in that product category when really the commercial stopped airing right. three years ago or whatever. I apologize. I haven't listened to uh, some of your demos lately, but have you incorporated any of your Volkswagen spots into any of your demos? Yes. Right. Yes. So it's perfectly fine easily, to have that there. They're, well, they're easily editable. Right. You know, if I needed to take it out, I could take it out. Right. Um, but even then, if Honda hard, listens but... to your demo and hears a Volkswagen spot, they'll be like, wow, she sounds great. Yeah. She's got, she's clearly cut out for automotive narration yeah. right yeah i mean you don't want to not have a mcdonald's spot on your demo if that's the best spot for you because at some point in the future burger king might hire you to do an ad right like you just or or another quick serve food company you, just, you you don't like you put the spots on your demo that that showcase you the best and they mm -hmm. may be completely made up but they mm -hmm. have a real brand in them and mm -hmm. they may be actual spots that you have uh done before but right. they're you know they might still be running they might not but hopefully right. if you have a mcdonald's ad running you're not uh you're not auditioning for a lot of burger king <laughs> probably not <laughs> and this is why google calendar and iCalendar is your friend keeping track of conflicts exclusivity buyouts rebuys have all of that on your online calendar if you have a digital or a, a paper calendar or a whiteboard or whatever post-it system you use have that in place so because what's also good is two weeks before anything is going to potentially any uh, buyout is going to expire. You can always reach out to the client and say, "Hey, this is going to renew in two weeks. Are you re-upping it? Uh, do you want to? Do you need me to make any adjustments or adjust tags or something so you can do a renew? You know, see, that's a very important because sometimes it may not occur to them to do to renew it. And if they renew it, then you get more money more for money. the same job. That's right. The gig's so nice like it pays you twice. Any more work? I like that. I'm an intrinsically lazy yes. person. So I like the sound of that very, very much. Uh, Lori writes, social media posting can be more difficult for those of us who are quite introverted, finding the balance of how and what to share. That's an excellent point. I talk about um, when it comes to content posting, what is posting that which is professional, personable, or personal. You know, most people lean into posting the professional content because they think they're supposed to be professional. But if you're doing nothing but that, then you look like you're very self-serving and look at me, look at me, look at me, look at all these spots I did. But if you go too personal, then people may think you're a little boop, boop. So, uh, but the personable stuff, like talking about your hobbies and things like that, that's a pretty safe a safe way to go. And then people have comfort levels when it comes to posting about their family. You're very comfortable posting um, content with your kids in yeah. it. A yeah, lot of people care. are not comfortable posting stuff with their kids, but everybody has their own comfort level. Now, I don't 
I've known you for a long time. I've never really considered you an do you do you consider yourself an introvert, an extrovert? <laughs> what do you con- I consider myself an I, extrovert who needs to recharge frequently? <laughs> no, I am an I am an extrovert who gets power from standing in front of a crowd. <laughs> okay. Well that which is great. Which is great. <laughs> I'm like give me more of you. Yes. I'm with people. I feel like myself. Like I'm, I'm that kind of extrovert. My, my oldest daughter too, is the same way. Actually, both of them are very extroverted, but my oldest daughter from the time she was born, her favorite place to be was in a large group of people. Mm. That that's when she was her most like happy on and she would go home and talk about it for days and days and how much she loved it. And so COVID was really hard for her. Oh, um, can't run for mayor when you're at home. No. <laughs> no. Um, but uh if you're an introvert, I have a lot of I have a lot of family members who are introverts. Mm-hmm. Um I think, you know, I think you need to remember too that not everyone needs to have a social media presence that is like in your face. Right. You, you do what works for you. And that is true of every single thing in voiceover. Do what makes you feel comfortable and happy. And if it makes you feel uncomfortable, don't do it. Absolutely. That's I tell how people. I feel about, that's how I feel about direct marketing. Other mm-hmm. people love direct marketing, cold emailing and cold calling specifically. I, it makes me feel uncomfortable. And so I don't do it. And that's good for everyone else mm-hmm. because they're all, direct marketing and not I'm not in the way of their stuff that they're doing and it's right. good for me because I don't feel uncomfortable right I like auditioning you know you just you do what you you do what you what works for your brain what works for your heart and work, what works for your soul and just absolutely do that. yeah does anyone have questions for Karen about social media or authenticity and if you don't have questions about that we welcome your questions about all things voiceover. Karen and I have had many conversations about pay-to-play sites. We've had many conversations about AI. We've and plus we can just talk to each other. This oh. it's it's happy and fun for us, even if you don't have questions for us. Yeah. Because Karen and I, Karen and I just sometimes are just on the phone. We're just like and like an hour can go by. It's like, ah, where'd the time go? We got stuff, we got stuff to do. There is nobody there is something I want to talk about about authenticity. Please. Um I think that social media is akin to standing up at a wedding to give a speech. (laughs) Okay. Standing up in a crowd and saying something to a big group of people, right? I get worried when people in an attempt to be authentic divulge a lot of personal information about themselves and about their mental state and about their relationships and about their family members and about all kinds of things that in my mind, you wouldn't say in a crowd of people. Mm -hmm. Um, My social media presence um, is, I, I think it's a realistic snapshot of the wonderful parts of my life. Um. I don't post, I might post when I like totally fail at making dinner, but I wouldn't post about like, you know, my relatives are arguing and I'm feeling really upset about that. Mm, Yeah. I wouldn't post about like, I just got in a big argument with somebody who is very dear to me and I'm going to vague book about it and like talk about how people need to be more, you know, responsible and caring about other people's emotions or whatever Mm -hmm. things that are negative i don't typically like to post about online because i don't want i don't want the people who are involved in those situations or the people who care about me um to feel negatively if if it's an argument that i'm having with someone else i don't want i don't want to put that online Mm -hmm. if it's a if it's a bad personal feeling that I'm going through I might ask for support maybe but that would be like maybe 0.2 percent of all of my posts right yeah because when you're making posts like that who are you serving how is that moving your business forward so you know when you have a I got an I'm in an argument like who does that that's what I'm saying who does it serve when you're actually doing that it gives you a little short-term venting 
feeling better, yeah. but like, what are you going to get out of it? Like, what's the, what's the ROI on that? What are people going to say yeah. that are going to make you feel that are going to not, and even make you feel better? Cause everyone's going to be like, Oh, I'm so sorry. You're going through that. But like, is any, is any problem going to get actually solved? And is it going to improve the relationship of the person that you're having this interpersonal issue with? We're talking about this and my, my watch is telling me how far I've run. <laughs> I just went for a run. Are you in like a Flintstone mobile oh my recording booth? No, Are you like just... running while we're having this conversation? Maybe I was moving my arm and it made me. Th- you were, made oh, your art, your gesticulations was, was <laughs> helping. Your I was fit. on a run right before I came here and I didn't turn off my running app. That's, oh, that's, that's funny. That's <laughs> no. um, Yeah. But I, I completely agree with you. Um, I do think it's, it's a tricky balance, right? Because like for me, the reason why I've always been so open and transparent online, Mm -hmm. the reason why I've shared so much of my life started because I'm an opera singer and I have family that lives all over the world. So there are a bunch of relatives and people who I care about who like we went to college together and then we spread out into all different places or we were in a show together and they're my best, amazing, wonderful friends. And then we spread out all over the world. And so we don't have a chance to see each other every day at the office. We don't have a chance to see each other every day, you know, at church, if you go to church or whatever, like it, they're not in the community. The mm-hmm. only way that I have contact with those people that I care about is through online platforms. Mm-hmm. And so it was always very natural and organic for me to share parts of my life on social media because my family got to, and my friends got to take part in my life while not being physically in the same place. Right. Now that said, there are times when I've gone through hard things in my life. I went through a, a divorce in 2014. Um, and I wrote about that a few times. I've, I've had uh, people close to me pass away and I've wrote about that, written about that a few times online. Um, there are times when I've gone through difficult situations and I just wanted to share with my community about that. But I think I always write about it with a positive forward looking spin. Mm-hmm. Um, And so that anyone who came across it would read that on my profile and think, okay, this is really hard, but she's, she's handling it. Yeah. Like it's not a cry for help, but sometimes, sometimes I've seen people make a cry for help. And people do that all the time on social media and it's, yeah, it's just hard. It's just hard. If you are, if you're a regular person who has a regular job and, and you really need help and reaching out online to your community, okay, that's fine. If you're an actor or if you are someone who's selling services to the wider public, writing something like that online can make your situation worse. Yes. Because it's not, it's not helping you in the same way that like reaching out to 10 of your trusted friends would be helping you. Um, right. Because you're creating a public post that others can see that may impact your business yes and you have to think of yourself as a person who is more than just your wider your small community you you are if you're on social media and your pro and your profile isn't locked down to the extreme you are available to a wider group of people than just your friends Right. So that's something right. to keep in mind. Yeah. I, you know what I noticed? I think we're pretty much probably, I'm pretty sure we're connected on all the major social media platforms, but I don't remember you. I do see you on Instagram. Mm-hmm. I don't really know if you do much personal tweeting. No, I don't know how to use Twitter. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's fine. And <laughs> LinkedIn, I don't see your, you don't, you're no, not terribly active on LinkedIn I either. I have what I like to call LinkedIn security. Meaning LinkedIn I'm security. LinkedIn. I like that. I'm insecure about LinkedIn. Why are you insecure um, about LinkedIn? I just don't know how to use it well. Okay. And it's one of those things that I feel like, and I've taken lots of classes on it. And I just, I feel like I'm at a point in my life too, where I just feel like I do, 
so much on Facebook and, and Instagram more now. Mm -hmm. I, I just don't feel like I can add another platform to my, and that's, to my yeah. life. And, and even fine. like, uh, some of the groups that I'm part of, like the nonprofit groups and things, they use uh discord to mm -hmm. just talk to each other and, and bounce ideas off of each other. And, and even just adding that as like another mess place that people can message me and another thing that I have to yeah keep, keep track, track of. of is like yeah. my brain is just like my brain has put up a wall and I do my best but really I feel like I'm dropping the ball all the time with this like extra platform now no, that I have to be part of. it's fine look I I mean I don't know if you made a conscious decision to use Facebook at the exclusion and not use other ones but all Facebook, all social media platforms were built by different people, creating different algorithms to do different things. But now they're all competing with each other so much. Almost every, all of the social media platforms have all of the exact, exact same functions. So they're all basically the same. With that in mind, Facebook, well, we know Facebook was created. So, you know, what's his name could get, pick up chicks. Um, it's like, basically, if we really want to take it down to its core, but Facebook I'd like to think is really about having a conversation. Yeah. Because Facebook, yes, you can post pictures, you can post videos, but it's really about having a conversation. And that is what consciously or unconsciously, that's what you do, you do on Facebook all the time. You have conversations. Um, not like, hi, how are you? And people go click post, I'm fine. How are you? But like you're having conversations with your family, your friends, your alumni, your fellow voice actors, you know. And just other people who are just friends, you know, part of the Karin fan club. And you're you're just having, they're not one-way conversations because that sounds very self-centered and narcissistic. It's not, you're just having conversations yeah. about this is what's, you know, this is happening, that's happening. Twitter is not conducive to that. Instagram is not conducive to that. Yeah. YouTube is not conducive to that. Reddit, it's, yeah, TikTok, it's Pinterest, it's very one-sided because Instagram, you put up a picture. YouTube, you, you TikTok, you put up a short video. YouTube, you put up a longer video. Facebook, you have a conversation. Yeah, And you being an extremely authentic person who is trying not to be presentational, you just up there and you just talk about your kids or you you know, you talk about your running, you know what I mean? So I think, I don't know if, did you make a conscious decision to say, I'm going to focus on Facebook and not really pay much attention to the others? Uh, Facebook was the first one that I was on. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I started, I was, I joined Facebook back when it was only open to college students. Mm. So I wasn't, I wasn't in the, so there were three waves right before they opened it up to everyone. First, 2004 just, is when it opened. Yeah. First it was just Harvard. Right. Then it was just Ivy League. Right. Then it was just uh, some universities in addition to the Ivy League schools, but mm -hmm. not all of them. Mm -hmm. And that's the round that I joined in. Oh, so that had to be right. 2005, six? 2005. Yeah. 2005. Yeah, because I, I joined 2007 when it went national, if not yeah. international. Which is crazy to think that I have lived now nearly 20 years on Facebook. Wow. Right? That's crazy. And I'm I'm 38. I just turned 38. And so yeah, by the time I'm so I guess that's 18 years on Facebook mm -hmm. so far. And yeah. when I'm 40 and it's 20 years, I will have spent literally half my life on Facebook. Wow. That's that's crazy. I don't know if that's a good thing, a bad thing, or just a know. thing. But I think it's just uh I think it's just a part of life. It like, is it's so much a part of my life that I don't I don't think I don't I don't think about it. I mean, I do think about it because I mean one thing that we haven't talked about yet is all of the groups, right? Mm, yeah, we can we can talk about that. And I think I think I'm much more vulnerable in groups than I am hmm. in, in Facebook groups than I am on my own profile. Okay. My own profile is like, I'm standing up in a crowd and I'm telling you this thing that's happening in my life. Mm -hmm. We just made a garden in the side yard. I saw you that. Know, I love being with my kids and my, co and their cousins. Mm -hmm. Like those, I just went to Houston to go see my dad sing in Tosca. Like it, those kinds of posts are what I put on my own profile. In Facebook groups, 
I might, depending on which group it is, I might say something like, hey, I'm really feeling like I'm not doing a good job as a mom because I'm doing so many jobs right now. I'm right. like working on vocation and I'm working on Nava and I'm working on my own work and I just feel like I'm dropping the ball and I forgot my daughter's note in her lunch today or mm -hmm. something. And that's in the voiceover moms group. Right. And all of the voiceover moms then can have a conversation with me and, and can comment on my post and say, oh my God, I did the same thing. And we're in a semi-private scenario where like, I know that probably my mom is not going to see that. Probably my aunt Bertha in Ohio, I don't have an aunt Bertha in Ohio, but if I did, you should. she probably wouldn't see it. Right. You know, I know that my clients are probably not going to see that. It's not a totally public thing, even though everything on the internet is somewhat public and you should never post things that you don't. Yeah, but it's a safe place for commiseration. That. It's a safe place for commiseration, right? With people that actually understand the problem yeah. that you yeah. are talking about, where people right. who you went to college with, as much as they're good friends, they may not really understand what that is or what that means or what you're trying to say or what you're trying to ask by making that statement over over here you know yeah. so i find that i find that interesting i am not in a voiceover mom's group no <laughs> i'm not in a voiceover dad's group i'm not a dad i have a cat um but uh so it's just interesting cuz i have not a dad's group voiceover cat dad's group maybe i'll form that cuz i just need <laughs> another thing to do because I'm just so <laughs> bored over here. I have so little going on. Uh, it could be the it could be the VO scratchigist. Strategist? Cat no, the VO catagist. The VO catagist. The VO catagist. We'll just get rid of the STR. <laughs> put that out. Put some some claw marks through it and just put a C. The, the catagist. Though I have been poked, though I have oh my. <laughs> though I've been poking, I've been posting about Kiyoki for the past few months on Instagram. My my yeah. my my boo boo my boo boo kitty in an attempt yeah. to not an attempt to do anything I just she's just awesome and we all know how good cat we we all know see anything I'm going to say about why I do it just immediately turns me into a cold hearted clinical cynical um I'm just trying to uh, click baby followers horrible cat person videos. just trying to get more followers but but you know I I do it because I I love my cat and um and I love sharing uh her silly little adventures that's why I call I have created a hashtag called Kiyoki Chronicles. You know, it just shows all the just mostly it's just pictures of her sleeping because she doesn't do that much else anymore because she's 17 now. But, um, <laughs> you know, but she's she's doing great. She's doing great. But, yeah, the voiceover Facebook groups, um, it's wonderful that there are that there are havens, we'll call it like the voiceover mm -hmm. moms group where you can. It's not even just about being yourself. It's being vulnerable, but being vulnerable in a very particular way in front of an audience that truly understands what you're saying and why you're saying it and what you need to fulfill as a result of posting that in that particular space. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, Cause I mean, how often in the, in the VANYC group, do you or one of your moderators have to post, please do not post that here. That is not what yeah. this is for. It's true. And you know, uh, as the, as the admin of a bunch of different groups, you really have to be on top of how you curate the content in your group. Mm -hmm. um, there are lots of voiceover Facebook groups. Yeah, too many. Way there too many. Hundreds. There are hundreds. Way too many. There are a ton. Um, but each of them has their own particular little quirks and flair about them. Culture, we'll say culture each of them has their own particular co culture mm -hmm. there are groups that are more suited for people who have been in the industry for a long time and have certain feelings about uh the new ways that the industry is moving forward yes i know exactly which group you're talking there to. are talking there are groups <laughs> there are groups that are uh good for us for a specific location like yes. voice actors of nyc and when we formed voice actors of nyc it was um in particular because uh we wanted to be able to connect with people in new york city to say like hey guys you know they're running late over at don case so like right just so you know plan two hours ahead mm -hmm. or like you know hey anyone anyone in the area want to get together and like have a drink at, at this 
bar or something like it was it was really a community that was based in New York and we had lots of in-person events and it was it served its purpose purpose that way if you're in voice actors of NYC by the way there is going to be a picnic in the park on uh the 29th Saturday yeah Saturday so you should definitely go we don't do as many in-person events um, anymore because I'm I'm not there and we had COVID and there's like a bunch of stuff, you know, that that prevents us. And also the place where we um, used to do all of our events, they now don't let uh, anything other than dance, I think. Arts on site. Um, yeah. They, yeah. I they saw have, that. E- I saw that email rules. a few weeks ago. Yeah. It's just purely performance art. Now. Yeah. They have different rules about who can use the space now. And we used to use that space all the time. Um, so we can go to another space in New York city, but it's, but it's, uh, more expensive and it's a lovely space. And yes, you can see why. Yes. There are other spaces too, but oh, there's tons um, of other spaces. Yeah. yeah. And then, uh, vocation voiceover that I run is, uh, you know, it started because of the conference that we did, but now it's, it's really a, like we do classes in there sometimes, and Mm -hmm. it's just kind of a community group that's really for people who, see themselves as as voiceover entrepreneurs yes shall we say mm-hmm. it and all all ways of doing work are welcome it's not just for the old school folks it's not just for the new people it's not it's not just for people who do online casting it's not just for people who direct, do direct marketing but it is for people who kind of see themselves as a voiceover business mm-hmm. um so and I love it. And I'm looking forward to uh, September. It's it's yes. digital this year. Yes. It's this year. Or... So we're doing we're doing online evocation in September. Mm-hmm. Uh, we haven't made any announcements about that yet or uh, opened up ticket sales, but we do have the date pinned. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we will uh, hopefully do a destination vocation again in 2024. Mm-hmm. Um, we're looking into dates and different and different hotels and different locations and we will get back to you when we nail nail it down cool hey jumping back on a uh, voiceover facebook groups are there any genre specific groups or any tech specific groups that you are a member of oh you know yes but i don't interact on those in those groups very much i i'm in a logic pro uh voiceover group because mm-hmm. i use logic for as my um as my DAW, my recording mm-hmm. software. Um, I'm in like an e-learning narrators group, I think. I'm in uh, an audiobook narrators group, but I don't mm-hmm. narrate a lot of audiobooks anymore. That's pretty much it. Yeah, uh, pretty much the same. I'm in an Adobe Audition Facebook group. Yeah. Like, because that's what I use. I'm in the professional audiobook narrators group. I'm in, I, we're probably in the same e-learning group but i can't think of too many more there's a cup there's a handful of others that i'm members of that i'm i mostly i mostly lurk in yeah. in you those know, i've been uh, i said this in a podcast but so this is not new information mm-hmm. but i've been uh kind of like fly on the wall hanging out in fiverr and upwork groups mm. just to be educated about what kinds of things those talents are talking about and how the platform works. I don't want to make a profile on there necessarily to see how it works. So it's helpful to be in those groups to kind of understand the landscape because a lot of people do really well on Fiverr and a lot of them are really actually charging industry standard rates Yeah, and um, doing not a bad job. Um, and so, And it has been so interesting to see not only the way that they talk about voiceover, but also the way that they talk about voice actors mm. who are not on Fiverr mm-hmm. and the way those voice actors maybe look down on them. Yeah, it's very interesting. And and it's it's really kind of disheartening. I feel I feel for them. Um because that's the way that people treated me. When I came into the industry using all of the most common online casting sites. Yeah. Um, um, it's what's the stigma du jour. And, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And it's really yeah. not fair. It's really not fair. I mean, I under 
understand, I under, I really do see both sides. I understand how you can be in an industry for a long time and think that it works a certain way and it's been working that way for you for years and years and years and you don't want it to change because it works very well for you this way and you think that it works for other people this way and mm -hmm. it's the best way to be. Um, and then here comes this new way of doing things and it's like, ugh now I'm going to have to adapt. And yeah. also like these people are doing it totally differently. That's not the right way to do it. Like I can, I can absolutely see that perspective. Yeah. But I also relate to the people who are just starting in the industry and have no prior knowledge of how things have been done up until the moment that they arrive. Right. And they see something as a way to move forward in the industry and mm -hmm. they jump on and they run with it and they do the best that they can and then mm -hmm. hear the, this old guard saying like you you're the reason why everything is bad now yeah <laughs> and, yeah and and i feel for them um and i know what it feels like to be that person and to feel like oh my god am i am i like single-handedly ruining this industry <laughs> right i is it uh, my fault yeah well to those people, I understand. I un I truly understand. I um, I have a Fiverr profile. Oh, I have an Upwork profile. I got them purely as the VO strategist. Yeah. So I could understand how they work and why they work. So I can give my students and when I'm on a panel or speaking at an event where I can disseminate objective information about them so that voice actors of all experience levels can make informed decisions yeah. about whether to use them or not use them based on their and comfort how level. Use them, how to use them well. How to use ethically. them ethically, how to use them properly, and and if if and how to use them that aligns with your value system. Yeah. You know what I, you know what I mean? Have I booked any work on either of them? No. Yeah. I haven't booked anything on yeah, them. But, you but that's not the point. To, you want to be able to teach from a place of knowledge. Yes, and that's and my that's my job. I I always I'm like I'm sorry, I'm I'm going to talk about church again for a second time. Please. I'm not a really I'm not a religious person. But but um I feel like it's akin to just listening to what the preacher says at church and never reading the Bible yourself, mm. which a lot of religious people do that. They go to their church service and they hear what is presented to them and they never read it themselves yeah. or they just read portions of it themselves. And they think that which they have been selectively produced by, but selected right. by whoever right. is speaking at the time. Right. And exactly. that forms their value system. Yeah, And it's the same kind of thing of like, if you don't know, you need to research things yourself. You need to you need to speak about things from a place of knowledge. If you're going to make a statement on social media, if you're going to make a statement in a presentation, if you're going to write a blog post, if you're going to make a video about something, do it from a place of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Not like, oh, I heard in 2018 that Voices.com was partnering with Vocal ID to create synthetic versions of our voice, which is not a thing that ever happened. Mm-mm. But that was a thing that was a fear of many people because there was a partnership, it might have been 2019, between Voices.com and Vocal ID, but only in so much that Vocal ID said, oh, here's an online casting site. Maybe if we are going to be looking for uh, talents to create synthetic voices from, we'll cast it on Voices.com. Let's do like a partnership with them. It was never mm -hmm. Vocal ID is going to take your auditions right. and turn you into a synthetic voice without right. your permission and vocal id has since yeah vocal ended ID that has partnership since parted, parted, parted ways with them and mm -hmm. rupal patel talked about it with us in 2019 at um at a vocation in new york mm -hmm. and but i still hear from so many voice actors well voices.com is stealing your voices and using it for ai that's inaccurate and yeah, it's inaccurate. Yeah, that is inaccurate. And yeah. and they they repeat that because that's what they read in a 
in a blog or they heard it in a Facebook group or something and they never researched it themselves. Right, right. Oh, uh, let me, looking at the chat, uh, Jenna got started on Upwork. Cool. Lori says, I'm not on Fiverr, but the people who are work so hard at the beginning for five or $10 until they have enough great reviews to begin raising rates. It wasn't my path, but I do have respect for them. Yeah, that's the thing a lot of people don't understand about Fiverr in particular is that there are three levels. And to get from the, the lowest level to the next level, you need to earn a certain amount of money in a certain amount of time and get a certain amount of reviews in a certain amount of time. And once you do that, then you get to the next one. And then when you get to that top one, you're pretty, it's pretty relatively easy to command, we'll say non-union industry standard rates. And then you can be, you know, you can do very do quite well. It's getting through that first two levels which will, I can't say always, but often requires you to accept rates that are below the industry standard. And for a very long time, I had a huge problem with that. But then I started thinking about stand-up comedians mm -hmm. where you want to be a stand-up comedian? Fine, you go to an open night, mic night for free late at night in New York City or LA, and you get up there and you do stand-up money, stand-up comedy for no money, and you suck. Mm -hmm. and you keep working at it and working at it and working at it. And then you get to know the club owner or the other stand-up comedians. And eventually you'll get $20 and you may not go on until four in the morning, if at all. And you keep doing that and doing that. And then, you know, developing your skill sets, which increases your value, which increases the amount of money that you can pay, get paid for the services that you're providing that being stand-up comedy yeah. and so on. Once I kind of discovered that analogy from watching The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, um, I started, my thoughts were evolving on it. Would I do a voiceover for $5? No. Um, but also, this is also, I've been doing this for 25 years. I'm in, an, I'm in a first world economy who requires to get paid first world rates so I can afford my ridiculous expenses here in New York City. If I'm a voice actor in Indonesia and the economy of Indonesia says that this particular voiceover is worth $5 based on their economy, then yeah, I don't think that would be ethically a problem. So when someone on Fiverr, if that's their economic structure, if yeah. that's what they can afford based on their economy, okay. It's when people on Fiverr are from who are, who are in a production company in Chicago trying to pay an American voice actor $5 to do something that should be $500 that's when I have a problem with it ethically, because now you're devaluing the client, you're devaluing the voice actor, you're training the voice seekers to devalue other voice actors. But again, that's not, that's just my value. That's just my value system. Other people have different perspectives going in that stand up comedian perspective. And so, well, and the other thing is, you know, the market, the market, for everything changes all the time. Yes. Goods and services have been getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper <laughs> as yes. technology changes and yeah. things get easier to do. Mm -hmm. Like it used to be when you needed a voiceover, uh, you had to go to a studio and that person had to physically be there and you recorded it on tape. <laughs> and then if you wanted to cut it, you had to physically take the tape and cut it and put it together and mix it with music and all of that. And yeah, like now, you know, yeah, I literally walk upstairs into my booth and hit record and make as many mistakes as I want. And I can have everything ready and completely done and fixed for you in seconds. Mm -hmm. Right. Minutes. It, yeah. And it's just, you don't, it doesn't take me all day to do something. It takes right. minutes right. and the technology is so different. And so like you, I feel like the rates are different, but at the same time, the medium has completely changed mm -hmm. so that now a radio commercial or a TV commercial that used to just be in one little local market. Now it can be online and millions of people can see it. And I should be paid differently for that exposure. Yes. The usage changes the market yeah. because of the, because the, the ability to do it. Um, this le and this leads me into another thing is that, um, you know, the reason, one of the reasons why people say that pay to play sites are the reason why so many rates, non-union rates suck. I disagree. 
it's because there are more voice actors than ever trying to do voiceovers and it's just a simple supply and demand. And any percentage of any person in any industry is going to be a cheapskate and try to make other people be cheapskates and take advantage of them. And pay, online casting sites is one way to do that because there are scumbags in every industry. <laughs> Yeah, but no matter I mean, where you it, go, it's that. But it's also like you can literally have Brittany from the front office come into a quiet back room and you can pull out your phone and she can record the voiceover on her phone on your phone yep. and you can put it into your video yeah. and like not pay her because you're just paying her an hourly wage to be a receptionist. Yeah. Like and that used to not be a thing. Yeah. So it's a combination of there are tons of voice actors in the market. There is a lot of different kinds of work. There, the technology has completely changed. Um, rates in general for creative work are going down. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people can do things themselves that they used to have to hire a professional for. And, and it's all just, there's just a lot of, it's just a bunch of different things. Yeah. Um, and AI, AI is here. And... Uh -huh. People have been asking me a lot. I've been on my own share of podcasts and appearances, and my students have been asking me, like, what do you think's happening? What's going on? And um, when I started in 1996, there were, what, a couple of hundred, maybe a thousand people out there pursuing voiceover and almost mm -hmm. none of them doing it full time. For them, mm -hmm. it's a side hustle, extra money as a on-camera or theater voice actor. And then when internet, social media, pay-to-play sites, home recording came around, the floodgates have opened and now there are hundreds, maybe hundreds of thousands of people trying to do voice acting. But now that AI I is mean, here. I mean, voices.com says they have 2 million. Yeah. How many of them are site? paying? How many of them are paying that $500? I'm not sure, but I'm sure I there know, may be, but, there may very well sure be that many profiles. Yeah, I'm sure there's, there's. Yeah. And so now that AI is here, What's going to happen to those Fiverr, those entry level, low cost Fiverr jobs, Upwork jobs? And we both know that Voice123 and Voices.com have created lower budget structure mm -hmm. on their platforms to compete with Fiverr in particular, and probably mm -hmm. Upwork to a point too. And now that AI is here, a lot of those entry level jobs, I don't know what percentage of them, but a percentage of them are going to go away, which means it's going to get harder for people who want to get into the voiceover industry to get into the voiceover industry, which will reduce the number of voice actors who are doing this, which may increase the rates back to yeah, pre-2000, what year 2000, whatever levels. Could be. I don't know. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. But what I tell all my students and anybody who I talk to about this is that you need to position yourself. And we were here to talk about social media and authenticity, but this is going to work. Watch me with this. The more of an authentic storyteller that you are, the better of a chance you will be at future-proofing your voiceover career. As long as you're a better storyteller than an AI, you're probably going to be okay. If yeah. you're not, you're probably not going, going to be okay. So all the TikTok videos in the world ain't going to help you if you're not properly developing yourself and honing your craft um, as a voice actor. Um, Lori says the pro audio suite podcast today is a must listen. One of the hosts nine year network gig is going to AI 30% of his income. Wow. You know, that's, a, that's another thing. So that's another thing to, uh, discuss. Yeah. In voiceover. You cannot put all your eggs in one basket. You absolutely cannot. Nope. Um, if you, so in 2018, a lot of us were plugging along on voice one, two, three, doing our thing. Mm -hmm. And then they completely changed the way that the site runs and tons of people who were earning a lot of income just on voice one, two, three, were suddenly like out in the ocean without a life raft <laughs> for a while, <laughs> swimming around, trying to find another life raft. Um, because, uh, just the way, like the game, it just changed the mm -hmm. platform changed. Um, if you are a person who only gets work from your agents and then your agency closes or COVID hits or COVID hits or your agent, me too, someone, you know, Oy. like, yep. like your agent could be gone overnight. Um, the agency might be closed and you don't have any 
warning. Uh, that's something to consider. Yeah. It's good to to diversify the way that you source new work. It's good to not rely only on one job. Like mm -hmm. that's great if 30% of your income comes from one place, but make sure that that other 70% is totally built up so that if slash when that job goes away, because all jobs go away at some point, um, you need to be sure that you are prepared and ready for whatever happens. Yes. So agents or casting sites or direct marketing, like I say, should be, can and should be part of a balanced breakfast, but should not be the entire um, meal. Um, so yeah, it's in store, important to create stable dive. It's just like a, just like a financial portfolio, a retirement portfolio. It needs to be stable and diverse with low risk over here and high risk over, over there. Um, we've got a couple of minutes left. Does anybody else have any questions about social media or authenticity in particular or voiceovers in general before we wrap up? Because I know Karin and I could just, we could just talk all day. We could blab forever. We could, but we've all got things to do and places to go and cats to pet and, and kids to feed and stuff and stuff. So any, anything else before we, uh, before we wrap up? While somebody may be furiously typing away, uh, Karin can be found at KarinGilfry.com, which you can find in the uh, description of the uh, of this YouTube channel. Um, and you are vice president of the National Association of Voice Actors. Anything, anything, uh, anything fun and special and interesting going on? Who's your next speaker? Uh, oh yeah, you were just telling me who your next speaker is going to be. Yeah. So actually, this this Wednesday, so uh, Nava has a bunch of members only classes. You get at least one free members only class per month, um, and this. Wednesday, if you are a member of Nava, you are invited to come to our class called um, Already Enough, taught by Demond Logan, who is a uh, mindset coach and speaker, and he's been doing um, uh, Mindset Monday videos for Nava for a few months now. People really like him, and so he's going to be teaching a class all about how to get rid of self-doubt and push forward in your artistic career. Um, and that's Wednesday at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. But you can only join if you are a member of the National Association of Voice Actors. If you would like to become a member, you can go to navavoices.org. We have a bunch of other cool perks that you get, including access to health insurance. If you're interested, if you need that's a, a big a deal. health insurance plan. And we have an open enrollment period right now um, through May 20th. Cool. And when's your next public appearance? That's a good question. I don't know when our next public class is, but we have community classes all the time. Mm -hmm. um, we just don't have any like, right. Usually what happens is someone will come to us and say like, oh, I really think that we should do a, like a town hall discussion about AI. Mm -hmm. And then we'll say, great, let's open it up to the whole community and do it on Thursday. Um, if you want to be part of our mailing list so that you get updates on when those classes will be, uh, you can also join the mailing list at Nava Voices dot org yep. without having yep. to pay anything very cool and your next conference uh will you be at uh dallas one voice in dallas this summer uh i nava is going to be a sponsor of one voice in dallas oh so i will be there as part of that um in in uh, august mm -hmm. um nava is also a sponsor of mavo which is it, happening in november, november in virginia um, yeah and so we will be at mavo as well and um what else? Evocation is happening in September. Mm -hmm. um, what else? There's like that's enough for now. Cool stuff. I'll be around. I'll yeah, be around you'll be around places. Yeah, I will be in uh, Dallas as well. Oh, great! Yeah, I'll be doing a uh, get your act together. How to write a business plan? Public presentation. I'll be doing a private presentation, like a three hour extra workshop on managing your finances as a voice actor, and I will be on a rates panel. Um, so, and I'm sure, I think I, I, I'm sure you're going to be on a whole bunch of panels and doing a whole bunch of presentations as well, or are you just going to be manning the Nava table the whole weekend? I'm not sure yet. I mean, okay. we'll see what comes up, but I'm honestly, I normally, when I go to conferences, I'm doing like 7,000 panels and classes. And if I only do the Nava booth, 
I think I'll be happy to just. Wouldn't like, that be sit, nice? You just kick your feet up and, and like, just like talk to people. Yeah, and like maybe go to some classes. Oh, heaven forbid! Never get to go to any classes. I know, I know. Well, you should do that. All right, everybody. I'll definitely so definitely be there. Okay. Well. Awesome. Karen, thank you so much for hanging out with us for uh, the hour. So everybody, this is being recorded. This YouTube live is recorded. So it will uh, it will be here on my VO Strategist YouTube channel. And for those of you who want to learn more, go to check out Karen Gilfry gilfrey.com. You can go check out the Voice Actors of New York City Facebook group. If you're a New York area person, you can go check out the National Association of Voice Actors. And I strongly consider uh, a membership because they are they are offering so many if they're offering so many great uh, services and videos and just good information. I mean, the AI writer, if nothing else was, is just a huge tool. I, I myself have been using it lately and um, yeah, it's been very positively received by all of my new clients and uh, new clients and any uh, existing clients that I need to, to introduce that you introduce you to on that one. So thank you so much for hanging out with us today. And um, guys, everybody here, thank you so much for hanging out. Check me out at VOStrategist.com, book a free 15-minute consult, consider to becoming a Padawan in my mentorship program, and stay cool, stay safe, and happy voicing. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a good one. Bye.